There's a popular Christmas song, well I call it, I guess a Christmas song, it's called Silver Bells. And that song begins with the familiar words, city sidewalks, busy sidewalks. And have you experienced those lately? This is an accurate picture of city streets during this season. They are filled with holiday shoppers, so much sometimes you have to be careful not to get trampled. Every person on those sidewalks is going somewhere, stressed, bumping into people to get what they want in a hurry. They're on a mission. But where have they gone when all of it is said and done? Research says that in 1950, two-thirds of the population lived in rural areas. That trend has changed. And they predict that by 2030, the urban population will grow to be 4.9 billion people, which is 60% of the population of the world. By the way, in 1990, that was the population of the world. So you can imagine what's going to happen with the cities. I wonder, though, to play off the title of Shel Silverstein's book, where does a sidewalk end? If the sidewalks are busy, where's everyone going? Each person has a goal, but what, what will that goal get you, or where will you land with that goal? The entire world population on their way to destinations, busy city sidewalks. Jerusalem was a bustling city, a busy city, had busy sidewalks. And it was the capital of the nation of Israel, led by an unfaithful, evil king named Ahaz. And I say evil because he worshipped idols, so much so that he sacrificed his own son in the fire to Moloch. In Isaiah 7 is recorded the political scene of that day. It was volatile with Syria threatening Jerusalem, who had formed an alliance with Israel and others. Syria had formed this alliance to take down Jerusalem. God sent Isaiah the prophet with a message. Don't be afraid, you will not be defeated. Then God says, Ahaz, ask me for a sign. Ahaz had sought out a treaty with Syria, but God didn't want him to make that treaty. God wanted to show Syria who was in charge. Not believing God, Ahaz says, Ahaz says, I won't put God to the test. But God told him to ask him for a sign. Those are pious sounding words, but what he really meant to say was, no, I won't believe you, God. I'm going to do it my way. And he went about it his own way, scheming a backroom alliance with the most vicious army of all time. He wanted to keep his idol worship. Perhaps even aspiring to become a more powerful and prominent king in the process. But without God, that's not going to work. So city sidewalks, busy sidewalks, filled with scheming, striving, scurrying without God in mind. Like Ahaz, most are on their way to nowhere. God amidst all of that with Ahaz made a promise. He said, I'll give you a sign. You won't ask me for a sign, I'll give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel. And I want us to take a look at that sign today. Ahaz wouldn't ask God for a sign because of his unbelief. I watched a video of an interview with atheists this past week. And the common comment that was with all of these people, and most of them were very young, the most prominent comment was, there is no evidence or not enough evidence that shows that there is a God or a higher power. And I just thought, wow, yeah, wow. What more do you want? Regardless of Ahaz, the Lord was going to give a sign, one that showed Jerusalem's ultimate victory with God. 
Not by Ahaz's plan, but by God's plan. Um, it went far beyond, that plan went far beyond the borders of Jerusalem back then. In the sea of bustling humanity, all chasing their yearnings and strivings, God said, I will do something about this, and I will show them that I am still here, and that I care about them, that I love them. This was always God's plan. Titus 1-2 says, We have a hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began. God had this plan all along. It was his plan before the stars were set in place, before the sea and the land were separated. God had this plan. Before life existed on the planet Earth, God had a plan that would culminate in the sacrifice of his son for the forgiveness of sins for the people he created. So Jesus, when he was on earth, went through the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd, Matthew chapter 9, 35 and 36. They were busy city sidewalks filled with helpless, harassed people who needed a shepherd, a shepherd God had planned to send from the beginning of time for their redemption. The Today Show anchor named Ann Curry interviewed Anthony DeCurtis, a writer for Rolling Stone magazine. DeCurtis talked at length about the late George Harrison's search for a meaningful spiritual life. Apparently, Harrison was the most spiritual of the Beatles music group. He said, Everything else can wait, but the search for God cannot wait. Now, I know that you wouldn't agree with every view George Harrison had on God. He had some really strange views, too. You wouldn't agree with all of those. But he was right when he said, when he talked about the importance of finding God. The good news is that God isn't hard to find. He wants you to find him. He made it possible in every way possible for you to find him. He gave a sign. His son sent straight from heaven by his choice and motivated by his love for us. And Jesus died on that cross to save us. Do you believe that? Have you accepted that fact? Does your life show that you believe that and accept that Jesus is Lord? God said he'd send a sign. And that sign would show his plan. But who was the sign for? He sent the sign. Did you know that that sign, that plan of God's, was for all people? Not just a select few, not just one privileged group of people or nation of people, but for all of the people that he created. No select ones. There was a lady who had a, a circle of friends for whom she really wanted to buy Christmas presents. And, and time had slipped away on her. She was busy at her work and she couldn't get to the store. And, and all of a sudden, it was the day before Christmas. With only a day or two left, she decided to give up on the gift idea of giving, that, giving everybody on her mailing list a gift and said, I'll just settle for sending them a beautiful card. So she went to the local gift shop and hurriedly went through the now picked, well picked over stack of cards and found a box of 50, just exactly how many she had on her mailing list. She didn't read the message inside for time's sake, but noticed the beautiful cover on the cards and there was a gold trim around it and a floral appearance on the front of the card and she thought, that's perfect. So she signed them all with all my love. And as the new year came, she finally found time to sit down and take a breath. And she hadn't mailed out a couple of the cards yet, and so she decided to read what was in the card. And to her shock and dismay, it said, this Christmas card is just to say a little gift is on its way. Oops. She had to go buy gifts for everybody now. And so she was a little dismayed because of this. 
Now think about this. God sent a message. You are all getting a gift. If God would have wanted Isaiah to put it in a rhyme, he might have said something like this. He might have said, this prophecy is just to say the greatest gift is on its way. But it is the greatest gift that a person could ever receive. And you know, God wasn't shocked at what the gift said. God wasn't dismayed at what the gift said because he knew what it said. He sa it said what he wanted to say. Do you remember the angel that appeared before the shepherds who were watching their flocks by night? They announced that the birth of Jesus, they announced the birth of Jesus in Luke. And Luke records it like this. Fear not, for behold, I bring good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The prophecy of Isaiah to Ahaz had worldwide eternal implication for all of history. People hustling and bustling, busy city sidewalks full of people, Everywhere, would, everyone would be affected by this sign. It would reach the busiest of people. Jesus is God's gift to everyone, especially for those who actually stop, get off of the busy circle and look and search. His gift is for you. Do you understand God sent you that gift the gift of life in Christ Jesus. We need to accept that and appreciate it and live our lives that make the statement that we believe that. So God sent a sign and it was for all people. But what else is there that he gave in this sign? How do you go about capturing the attention of a crowd of people? Well, today some use terrorism. Some use sign, Some are trying to use signs or protest marches. Some have tried streaking. Some are looking for miracles, maybe like the face of Mary in a window on a building or someone claiming to have gone to heaven to see Jesus and returning and telling all about it. People are looking for anything and grasping at anything. It's interesting, there was a commercial a perfume commercial for Cody Nuance for women in 1975. And they had a quote that said, if you want to capture someone's attention, just whisper. That was the commercial, that was the punchline of the commercial. God's sign was miraculous. It wasn't a whisper. It was loud. A virgin conceiving by the Holy Spirit, never having been with a man, that's miraculous, astounding, mesmerizing, out of this world kind of thing. That is not whispering or being subtle. It was meant to be seen. It was meant to be noticed. King Ahaz didn't believe it. He didn't notice it. The promised sign didn't get him his attention, get his attention. He didn't notice it. He didn't accept it. There were actually, there was actually, history says there's a young woman in his day who got pregnant and named her child Emmanuel. But that wasn't God's plan. That wasn't the, the sign that God sent. Matthew chapter 1 verse 22 and 23 tells us that this promise refers directly to Mary. All of this took place, it says, to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah. A virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and name him Emmanuel. What did the world, did the world sit up and take notice? It was clear. It was loud. It was mind-blowing. It was miraculous. But did people believe it or accept it? Were Jesus and Mary the focus of that night? Or did people just keep going about the busy sidewalks chasing after their desires? You know, it was one of the busiest times in Bethlehem. Remember? that The city sidewalks would have been bustling with people because the edict had been given for everybody to return to their birth town 
so the census could be taken. Imagine all the people heading back to their hometown. Imagine the hustle, the bustle, the people meeting and talking and laughing and, and all of those things going on in Bethlehem. It wasn't a coincidence that the inn was full that night in Bethlehem. It was like in cameras here when the MS bike tour comes through. Every hotel, every room is booked up. There are no rooms. You can't get rooms that week. All of the returnees to Bethlehem on the sidewalks, on those busy sidewalks, but where were they going? They had to register quickly so they could get back to living their life. This sign was largely overlooked and missed by most people, too busy to notice. But do you believe the sign? Many say there isn't enough evidences, but what more do you need? But there's one last thing. Ahaz struggled because he couldn't fathom that God was with Israel. He couldn't believe that. He was looking at it from his perspective and insight rather than God's perspective and knowledge. The sign that God was given was a baby boy named Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God is with us. He is not apart from us. He is not distant from us. He is with us. And that is significant because he was saying, Ahaz, I'm with you. You're not going to lose. Just do as I say, and you will not lose. But he was talking to a man who had sacrificed his own son in the fire. God is present among his people, always has been, always will be. He's here this morning with us. When we leave, he's still with us. He goes with us wherever we are. You know, we have two natures. We have a human nature and we have a spiritual nature. His spirit indwells us. He lives right inside us. That's what the scripture tells us. So he's not gone. He's with us. John 1.14 says, The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. He came to earth. He came right into our presence. New York Yankees announcer Phil Rizzuto once suggested to manager Joe Torrey that he, be, that he try managing from on high, it would be better to manage from on high than right on the base field, baseball field from that level. So he was saying, come up to the broadcasting booth and manage from up here. Tory's reply was, upstairs, you can't look in their eyes. Jesus came to earth and he looked in our eyes because of the leader that he is, the king, the high priest that he is. He was incarnate God on earth, but he wanted us to see him and he wanted to see us. Ahaz didn't get all of that because it was a prophecy of the future as well as true for his day. God's holy city, Jerusalem, was going to survive. It didn't matter what Ahaz planned, what Syria planned. What all of the nations that conspired with Syria planned. It didn't matter. But the busy streets in that city didn't focus on God. They were simply too busy. God in another promise said that he would establish a new covenant, not like the old one. Everyone would know this covenant and have a choice to be part of it. He will be their God and they will be his people. And they will walk the busy city sidewalks by his will and not chasing after their yearning and desires. They will glorify him through this baby Jesus, his son who sacrificed himself on the cross for the sins of the people. He said, my laws will be on their minds and in their hearts. God has given the world a sign. That sign was the birth of a baby boy named Emmanuel, we know as Jesus Christ. God is with us by a virgin and he would give his life for the sin and redemption 
of the people so they wouldn't have to dwell in the depths of hell. That baby boy would be king. He would be our Lord. He would be our high priest, offering that sacrifice on our behalf so we can once again be in a relationship with our Father in heaven and have eternal life. In the season of festivity and gift giving, is there anything that you can compare to the gift that has already been given by God to us? There is nothing. Nothing can compare. There never will be a gift so precious. You will never find another gift so precious. There is nothing imaginable that could compare to this gift. You know, when, when Annabelle was born, when Edith was born, um, we had busy lives, but our lives changed. And they kind of stopped for a time because we appreciated the birth of the babies. And so we weren't so busy doing other things as we were busy with the babies. But then that time passed and we got busy again after helping out and doing what was needed. And, and we got back to being busy. And we're back on the busy sidewalks and we're walking and with the hustling and bustling people to get things done. And we can get caught up in that so easily. And, and it just, sometimes it just puts a stress on us and a strain. And that is for a large part what happened with God's miraculous sign. People got caught up in it for a little bit and then they go right back to the busy sidewalks that are going nowhere. And you know what? Satan wants that for you. He wants you to be going nowhere on the busy sidewalks because if you're doing that, you're not focusing on Jesus. Satan and his demons were having a Christmas party. And as the demonic guests were leaving, one of them grinned and said to Satan, Merry Christmas, your majesty. And Satan replied with a growl, Yes, keep it merry. If they ever decide to get serious about it, we will be in trouble. And that's how he works. He doesn't want you to get serious about God. He doesn't want you to get serious about Jesus he wants you to stay on the busy sidewalks, being busy, busy, going nowhere. That's his goal. So as you pass by people on the busy sidewalks, are you chasing your desires? Or are you thinking about God? And are you looking at the people and seeing that they are, are harassed without a shepherd? Every day they pass me by, I could see it in their eye. Empty people filled with care, headed who knows where. On they go through private pain, living fear to fear. Laughter hides their silent cries that only Jesus hears. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, he's the open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When will we realize people need the Lord? That is the hymn that we're about to sing. That is a six, hymn 660 in our hymnals. And I just want you to think about that as we sing this hymn. Think about what you're thinking about on the busy city streets. People need the Lord. People need 